All right, we have come to the end. This is, in fact, the last video about Supernatural Season 5. For these are what I believe to be the top five best episodes of this season. Obviously, there was a ton of fantastic episodes that came from this season to the point where I think I have at least half of them on my phone here in my document. So as before, we're going to start off with the honorable mentions, which there are a few, so we're going to get through these as fast as we possibly can. Now, do note that some of these may surprise you. These are what I personally feel to be the best episodes of this season, and that's a lot to ask considering some you know are coming and some might surprise you. So starting off with our honorable mentions, the song that remains the same. This is a very cool take on the Terminator kind of mythos of time travel, going back in time and destroying the creator of the thing that is the target of said thing. It has a cool, if not kind of unfortunately short end for Anna, but it still has this really cool mythos. And it also has an introduction of Michael as their father in a young form. Hammer of the Gods, obviously this one is just a cakewalk in terms of how awesome this episode is with the butchery of all of the pagan gods. We have the sacrifice of Gabriel that was unfortunately retconned terribly in latter seasons, but it still has such a massive impact and a great end to a character that we thought was the end of them. And if that had been the end, it would have been a fantastic end. Free to be you and me. Now this was the first episode that really started to pump up season five. We had had the kind of uh, opening the good God y'all episode, but this was the one that really started to cement the destiny between Sam and Lucifer. And it's also the beginning of Dean starting to realize that if he thinks that he is going to survive and defeat Lucifer, he needs his brother's help. Sam interrupted. This is actually one of the best one-off kind of filler horror episodes that the show ever did in my opinion. It had some cool scares, it had some really cool mind trips. It took a very simple concept and expanded on it in a way that I didn't think was possible and delivered an episode that I still find to be quite creepy because it does deal with the idea of mental illness, whether you can believe it or not aspect, which was very well done in my opinion. Point of No Return is the 100th episode of the season where Zachariah has a kind of a casual what are you going to do about a conversation with an angel all the while uh, a human being is having his brain melted out of his body. And then we also get Zach getting stabbed in the throat, which is super cool, as well as Adam unfortunately getting locked in to the whole Michael situation. You thought that Dean was going to say yes to Michael and he's able to pull that big switcheroo and it's such a cool and landmark episode in terms of 100th episodes. In terms of the 300 episodes with 100, 200, and 300, this is my favorite of the three. I do feel that the second one is definitely the best one in terms of fan service, but I like this one the most. And finally, and this is the one that's gonna get a lot of you, Changing Channels. Yes, I don't list Changing Channels in the top five, but it is probably the highest of my honorable mentions for exactly what you all know the episode to be. It's humor, it's witticism, it's parodies of all different forms of media. It's just not really as much story as you would like for an episode like this. And for being as highly regarded as it is, it does not push the story as much as it should until the last five minutes. It's still funny. It is still a gut buster, but it's not in the top five. There we go. Those are my honorable mentions. And now we get into the top five, starting with number five. The Curious Case of Dean Winchester. Now, technically this episode could be viewed as a filler episode, but it does have massively engaging, heartwarming, and gut-wrenching dynamics with Bobby and his relations with the brothers. All the while having a fantastic anti-hero villain in this episode with the witch with the chips. If there was ever a character that I wish could come back into Supernatural before it ended, it was this guy. This dude left such an impression on me. And it's not just because I'm a sucker that has anything to do with poker and television or movies. It's just how cool the character comes across as well as him having to give all of those years back to his beloved and watching her die in front of him because she is done living the immortal life. For an episode that you thought was going to be funny, which it is because Dean is old and the 
actor who plays old Dean is really funny. It's the parts with Bobby dealing with his depression and his feelings of uselessness and the witch and his connection with his beloved and the cost of immortality, seeming immortality, that make this episode so memorable and so good in my opinion. Number four, My Bloody Valentine. This is my favorite encounter battle with any of the four horsemen. And while Death definitely has one of the best intros of the horsemen, let alone of any character in supernatural history, it is this episode that starts off with humor and then goes right to carnage with people eating each other. And it takes the idea of famine and turns it on its head. It's a really cool, unique idea that you eat yourself to death because you are internally hungry. You are ever longly hungry. I like how they use the vices of Castiel's uh, human, Sam's bloodlust. Everyone in the town is just obsessed with what they are obsessed with to the point where they kill themselves from consumption. All the while, Dean is in the background not being affected by anything, and it's because of his lacking hope, his time in hell, as well as kind of the perceived notion that I had that he never had a soul or he had a, such a fractured soul that it was beyond repair to an, to an extent. And then Famine too. The guy who plays Famine is so creepy. He's such a menacing presence and when he gets his comeuppance, it's such a satisfying moment in the show. All of this carnage, all of this bloodbath, all of this gore, which by the way, there's some really cool gore effects. There's also a Cupid in this episode, which I forget, but it's not an unwelcome surprise every time he appears. It's just a really well put together episode and in my opinion, the best fight that they had with any of the four horsemen in this season. And number three is Abandon All Hope. Now I might be a little bit on my high horse here, but in my opinion, this is the best mid-season finale that Supernatural ever produced. The only other time that I ever got as jonesed as this episode did for me is the season 11 mid-season finale, which unfortunately had a little bit of an unfortunate return, whereas this one actually had a pretty decent return with Sam Interrupted, even if it was a filler episode. Abandon All Hope is just such a dark episode. There are little bits of humor here and there, but the idea that they are going in to basically cash in all of the chips they have on the cult taking out Lucifer, the losses that they suffer being Joe and Ellen, and Castiel being locked in this ring of fire all the while having a debate slash conversation with Lucifer, spinning that silver tongue of his again. This whole episode is so well put together and so enthralling. From the camera dynamics they use with Castiel moving around with his with his teleportation, this is something I wish they really did more of in the show and they never really did. I feel like this was a cool camera trick and they're like, yeah, we're never gonna do this again. I, I really wish they had because I thought that was really creative. The explosion that blew up the Watchmen set to the point where they actually could never film in this area again because they used too much ordinance. And then the ending where you totally think they've got him and he gets right back up again with a giant bullet hole in his head. One of the coolest moments in Lucifer's history of a character in this show and just one of the darkest episodes in the supernatural lore. Number two is really the darkest episode of this entire season and that is the end. The alternate future that we are given from Zachariah to Dean in terms of what will happen if Dean does not say yes to Michael. The implications alone are superb to witness, but one of the first things I have to give major props to is the production team for going to the absolute nines in terms of creating a futuristic world on a television show budget that is not on the same lines of The Walking Dead. They took the Watchmen set, which they would blow up, in six episodes later, and they turned it into this hellish landscape where the world has been taken over by the Croton virus. Dean, in this future, is a soulless, conniving, and very selfish, and willing to sacrifice anyone to achieve what he believes is his goal. And we also get to see alternate futures for Chuck, Castiel being an orgy human being, as well as Sam as Lucifer. Probably one of my favorite moments in Supernatural history is when Dean comes across his future self getting his neck broken under Sam's boot 
and then Sam turns around and has this conversation with Dean that breaks Dean to watch his brother be taken over by this pure evil and there's nothing he can do. All he can do is go back and try and stop it from happening. Supernatural would do a lot of alternate history, alternate world, alternate universe sort of ideas throughout its entire timeline but this is still the best one they ever did. The production team kicked it out of the park. The acting and the special effects, specifically with the two deans, was superbly well done. All of the implications and all the alternate character writing was really, really cool to see. And it's just a dark fucking episode. And so that is why the end is number two. And now for number one, honestly, if any of you didn't think this was gonna be here, you would have been wrong. And for those of you who knew this was going to be here, you're not surprised, it's Swan Song. The best episode in the Supernatural's history, an episode that you can watch multiple times, over and over and over again, and not just in a single sittings, but over spans of decades. This episode hits me just as hard as it did when I watched it over a decade ago. This episode combines all of the elements that this show had built up to, all of these moments between the brothers, as to, while establishing new elements that still coordinated into what we had been shown and told and explained about their lives, about their connections with each other. And this episode is the swan song, literally, of Eric Kripke and his creation, something that he had spun around for a long time, starting with a news reporter looking into paranormal events, and it turned into what we now know as Supernatural, and it came to this moment, and he literally dropped the mic and he left. He did come back and write a few episodes in season six and season seven, if I'm correct, but this was his swan song in literal fashion, both in the title as well as in his own legacy on the show. The battle between Sam and Dean in this episode is still one of the most talked about parts of this entire show. The entire section of the graveyard is probably regarded as the best writing that Supernatural ever did. The montage vision of all of their moments from the previous seasons to nothing but wind is still probably one of the best flashback sort of things that I've ever seen in a show, of which they would terribly try to do in season 15, episode 19. But nothing ever comes close to Swan Song. Nothing can touch this episode. Nothing can discourage this episode. Nothing can break what is the quintessential perfect Supernatural episode. And that is why it is number one. Thank you so much for watching my videos. Thank you guys for having stuck with me for four years, having reviewed the first season of the first episode of the first season back in 2017. And for those of you who stuck around to hear, thank you so much. And of course, give me your guys' thoughts of what your top five episodes are. Write those down in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys have to say. That is season five. That is my original goal. That was a goal that I set for myself back in 2017 and I have now completed it. It's really weird to say that. I did not think I'd get here because of how slowly I was getting through season one. But obviously now we've got a whole new section to talk about. I'm very curious, I'm excited, I'm a little bit hesitant. What is going to happen re-watching five seasons that I have not re-watched at all since they aired. I'm going to get a rewatch of these five seasons and I might even watch season 11 again because that is the last good one. I appreciate you guys so much for having watched these videos with me, watching these episodes with me, and I hope you continue. Even for those of you who aren't fans of season 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, if you want to stick around and watch some of these episodes here and there, I'd really love to hear you guys' opinion. I really like reading your guys' comments and your thoughts about these episodes. So hopefully you'll continue along for the ride. If you like this video, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you when we start season six. Sometime next year. That's the best I can do right now. <laughs> Anyways, see you guys later.